Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to explore part two of diagonal flying. Last week, we introduced the, the concepts of it and some of the key elements that make this such a powerful uh, energetic expression and a, and a very effective martial arts uh, posture movement. Um, so it being able to really explore all the different components of it uh, actually brings together a lot of the stuff that we've been covering uh, through the uh, through the last couple of years here. So um, the uh, first of all, a, a review: diagonal flying is a, a posture in in Tai Chi Chuan. For those who are just tuning in, it's a posture in Tai Chi Chuan that that is. Um, let me demonstrate it. I'll just show you a very simplified, very simplified version of diagonal flying. It looks something like this. That is, you are you use this is the yang hand or the, the hand that expresses the energy. It's it's reaching out and it's the part that contacts my partner and and the energy is going to go up and out and there's a, a quality of of the energy is shooting up that way. So uh, it has a lifting, an uprooting quality as well as an outward thrust. The left hand is the yin hand and pulling this way, we're using the, uh, the, these two poles in opposition here, the yang and the yin to create a energetic circuit. And this is, this grounds the energy and the, the two pulling apart is, is referred to as splitting energy in Taiji. And so we're, we're creating this. So we have a, a combination of factors here. There's the, the, the splitting acts like sort of like a, an afterburner. So there is the quality of up and out that comes through the, through the contact with, with the right arm, but that splitting amplifies the effective energy now. So there's a lot going on within this particular posture. So besides the effective martial arts application of it, it is a, as you can see, it's a very young, open, expansive move. move. And so that, that opens up the chest, it opens up the arms, the shoulders, everything kind of gets gets very big, very young, very expansive. So it, uh, it allows for this expression. And if we plug into the big chi through our three pillars, then it we're using the nature chi, the big chi, allowing that to move through us to express through the hands and through the arms. And, and so it creates a very big, energetic expression. So we're going to review a lot of what we did last week, but I would encourage people to actually go back and check that out if you haven't done it already, or if, you know, even if you have, just go in and, and really get familiar with what we did there. We'll be repeating it again, but we're also going to be going forward. So you'll have an opportunity to to get really comfortable with some of the basics in the uh, in that, if you go back and do that. But uh, today we're going to include the transition, which is really key in any Tai Chi Tran posture, and it's particularly important in in this one because there is a tendency in this one to it's bigger, the stance is bigger, it's more open, and you're taking a step which is. You're stepping across your body and you're you're extending out greater than 90 degrees and so there's there's a, a wide your pelvis opens very wide for the uh, for the for the posture so it's uh it's good to really understand how to get there how to connect up the power of the legs the qua the torso the yao and be able to allow all that to express out energetically through the arms and how to keep the connection 
the energetic connection, and as well as the tensegrity within the whole system. So there's a whole lot going on here, and it's a lot of fun, and we're going to play around with that. And um, so let's, um, why don't we stand up, and we'll get working. Let's start by establishing our three pillars. Our three pillars of body, mind, spirit integration. And um, actually, before we do this, sit down again, please. I'm sorry. There was a question, and I think it's important to talk about that before going here. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, it just came to mind that one of the questions that came up uh, just before the we started here was, what do we mean by spirit in this, when I talk about body, mind, spirit integration? And it's a pretty broad topic, and I'm not going to do it justice by speaking in, in a very concise way that I'm going to be doing right now, but I'd like to give you some idea because it's a word which is, has a lot of different meanings. And uh, so you, you, we, we want to narrow our focus to some degree because we can talk about the great spirit. We can talk about uh, spirituality as being something uh, otherworldly. We can talk about all kinds of, of ways of using spirit. You can talk about uh, team spirit. You can talk about fighting spirit. You can talk about all these different ways that spirit is being used. So the way that I'm using it is the way that that. Shen is used in uh, the Chinese word Shen is used in Chinese medicine and in Chinese philosophy. It it has it has also many many different uh, connotations, but the one that is uh, apropos of what we're doing here in Taiji Chuan is the it's that aspect of you which is. Uh, operates your body mind so your the the your physicality and your mind are governed by this this something that is in itself immaterial but it is it cannot be objectified but it is that which can objectify that was it can it can say this or that it's the thing that's it's the part of you that says i am and so uh, if we're whenever you unify the whole system your body and mind it opens the eye of spirit and so when that happens then you are you are can avail yourself of energy and information that is not available to you in your normal mind state and you're not when you use the eye of mind so you're thinking mind so we're going beyond thinking into a state where we know without thinking and whenever we get the body mind spirit together this is what i refer to as super consciousness that is it's it's a state which integrates the body mind and spirit so the spirit itself is really cool. And people go there, you know, in through various means. And it's considered a very lofty place to be, but it also can disconnect from body and mind to, to go there. So we want to be able to integrate those. So you're able to do all three. You're able to, to act in the world. You're able to think thoughts and you're able to not you're able to be able to to just be so there's a so like i say there's a whole lot to unpack in in the term but when we talk about mind body mind spirit we're talking about in this case the that which animates you that which is directing your body mind so and uh 
rather than getting into that as a uh, as a topic, we'll save that for for another time. Uh, but that just gives you kind of a clue in what what we're talking about here. So in terms of substantiality, we think of the body as the most substantial aspect of you. We think of the mind as less substantial than the body, and then spirit or shen to be even less substantial than that. And but substantial does not mean um, uh, powerful. It means it means just more solid, more fixed. So as we get into more and more insubstantiality, we become less and less fixed. We get more expansive, more young, and we uh, we start to we're able to grasp. Uh, energy and information that is not available to us in our ordinary state. So let's uh, let's resume the standing posture and uh, see if we can take it from there. So the three pillars of body, mind, spirit integration. We want to plug in to the big chi we do that by first establishing our central equilibrium. So you feel the balls of your feet, unlock the knees and feel your, your weight centering over the balls of your feet. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop and your pelvis to level out. You know, flatten your, your lumbar area of your spine as you do that. And when you do that, you also want to check in and make sure that you haven't rocked back into your heels just by, by allowing your sacrum to drop. You want to still feel that, that connection through the balls of your feet. You want to reach with the crown of your head and tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate at the base of the neck. You just pause a moment, just feel into that. And feel what that is you're sinking into the earth through your feet, simultaneously reaching up with the crown of your head, you're establishing poles in opposition. The yang pole of your head reaching up, the yin pole of your feet reaching down, and you're creating this extension, and you're creating energy flow as a result of it. Now, push away from the earth, kind of come up as if you're rising up and then sink down, spiral down into your left leg and then into your right. Just So you want to get, you want to soften the hip joints so that your hips are sung. That is, you're, you're sinking and you're releasing the tension in your legs that pushes away from the earth. And they're thereby freeing up the hip joints, allowing you to move more freely and to have more stability. Reach out with your elbows a little bit, your arms are slightly rounded so that your shoulders are relaxed and open. And for our purposes today, I want you to feel your fingertips as though you have claws. And you're, where your fingernails are, and you're kind of grabbing with the claws and feel the instantaneous response in your hands as you, as you do that. You're activating the tensegrity of your connective tissue system as you do that. So your whole body gets connected up into one unified uh, organism, one unified system. In the Taiji Chuan Jing, the, uh, uh, one of the oldest Taiji documents, it's sometimes credited to Zhong, Zhong, um, uh, I'll forget. Um, anyway, so it's uh, one of the oldest documents, but uh, it, it says that the body must always 
be connected throughout. And so what we do, how we do that is we activate the tensegrity of the connective tissue system. So, uh, so just want to feel the energy in your hands and your feet as you, as you do that and feel that connection throughout the whole body mind. So right now we're, we've opened the big, the energy gates through the feet, through the crown of the head, through the palms of the hands, and we're exchanging energy with the environment. So we're no longer a closed system. That is the, it's not, we're not limited by the chi that's within our, within our skin, but we're plugging into the big chi. So feel those, feel those fingernails, your, those claws, and bend the wrists. So you just slide, so you're, you're like that, you're bending your, your finger, your wrists come up, your fingers go down. So very gently and just feel immediately how that activates the chi, how it gets chi moving. And then reach with your wrists, reach with your elbows. And by doing that, you're unlocking the shoulders, you're opening up the shoulder joints. And just bring your wrists up to chest height. Your elbows are relaxed, they're, they're reaching, but they're also down. And then reach with the fingers and open. And as you do that, you're reaching out and feel between your shoulder blades, feel that connection. So what we're doing is we're really establishing that whole body connection. So you wanna feel your feet with your fingers. You wanna feel your toes with the top of your head. Everything is responding instantaneously throughout the whole system. Now reach down with your elbows and bend the wrists the other way, lifting the fingers and hands come down. And just pause a moment and feel into the energy that's being amplified in your body mind. Start with your hands and your fingers and just feel into that. And then you can kind of, once you get the sense of that, once that becomes real to you, then you can start to trace that same quality, that same insubstantial quality throughout the whole body. So bend the wrists, feel those fingernails, bend the wrists, and then reach with the wrists, relax your elbows, reach, but reaching with it. So you're reaching um, and opening the shoulders, coming up to to chest height and then reach with the fingers and open, reaching out and feel the pull between your shoulder blades. So now we're going to begin with our uh, reviewing what we did with the, with the diagonal flying last week. So first we're gonna start very simply by lowering the right hand and feel the ball of your left foot and you set the left knee and spiral down to the left. So you're loading up into the left leg. Now feel the ball of the right foot Set the right knee, spiral down to the left. So you're loading up the right leg and then turn. And as you turn, you want to feel the left hand pulling, and reaching with the left elbow. Reach with the right elbow, right wrist, and feel the right hand pulling. So feel those two arms, hands moving in opposite directions. 
I'm only want to about halfway out here, just so you want to feel into that and feel that the splitting energy or the rending energy that um, that gets produced by this. These poles and oppositions are generating a flow. And they continue reach with the wrist of the right hand and turn and extend out and just open. So you're reaching with the, with the right arm, the right elbow, right wrist, fingers. Same thing with the left arm. To the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the right. And as you do that, left hand comes under your navel, the right hand facing the left hand. Now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the right. So you're loading up the left leg now and turn and feel that pull, feel those poles in opposition. Feel them reaching even if you're not moving. The right hand pulling back, the right elbow pulling back, the left elbow and the left wrist, the left hand reaching out. And then continue. And open. And feel like there's a big rubber band between the two hands. You're stretching that rubber band. And that's only one of the, the, the energies that's going on there. That's, that's inside the hands and then, but external to that, there's also a reaching out. There's an extension outward. So we've defined it by the relationship between the hands and also the relationship to the space around me, right? So we get, we have these two pulling and there's an extension, but there's also a pulling apart. So both of those paradoxically are happening at the same time. So people have requested that I, I turn my back and do it, uh, do it uh, this way so people can follow along. So let's, uh, let's just go through that with my back to you. So, Start with your left, left leg, your left ball, set the left knee, you spiral down to the left. So you're loading up the left claw, the left leg, and you're holding the left, the right hand under the navel, and the left hand facing the right hand. Now feel the ball of the right foot, you set the right knee and spiral down into the claw. So you're loading up the claw, you're spiraling down to the left. And feel those fingernails, reach with your elbows, and then reach with the wrists as you turn. And feel those holes in opposition. Feel them expanding outward, but also feel them pulling against each other. And continue. And feel the activity happening in your arms as you're doing that. And feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the right. Left hand under the navel, right hand facing, palm down. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. So you're loading up the left claw now. You're sinking into the left leg, still reaching up with the crown of the head, still reaching out with the elbows and, and then turn, reach with the elbows, the wrists. Feel those two poles pulling apart. 
stop and just feel into that. Feel the feel the tug there. And continue and open. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to take a step with this. So starting, feel the ball set the knee, the left leg, and spiral down to the left. The left hand comes up, right hand under the navel. So you're Notice how vertical my body is. I'm not leaning. Also, I'm not, my butt's not sticking out to the side. I'm spiraling down. So there's um, releasing down into that left leg. So notice my body turns as it sinks. And this winds up the, uh, the the waist so you can get this you can get this power to to move to the right there so you're spiraling down to the left so then bring your left foot in so that it's very close to your right foot and you're just lightly on the toe of your left foot reaching with the elbows the wrists feel that reaching with the crown of the head so you want to really get comfortable with almost all of your weight there in your left leg. You want to feel that. And the only way we can really get there is by spiraling down into the quad. So you're releasing the hip joint and the muscles around that so that now we can turn and step with the right foot. So you're stepping out on a 45 degree angle and placing the foot down. So you're still in that left leg, you're, you're, you're reaching out with that right foot. You haven't done anything with it yet. It's an empty step. So it's, we haven't loaded it yet at all. All we've done with the right leg now is establish our position. And this spiraling down to the left, all that did was it permitted me to be able to really feel comfortable and rooted and step out without having to lunge or, or fall out. I'm able to reach out and reach back and reach out very comfortably without having to adjust my position. By stepping out on a 45, now I feel the ball of the right foot. I want to push my right knee out, still spiraling down, and, and then spiral down to the left. So as I push the knee out, I set that, and then I release the right quad and turn, spiral down to the left. So I'm loading up. So what I'm going to be doing is this. I'm going to be moving to the right. So I want to first load up to the left. And this is where we're we're cocking the gun. We're pulling back the the arrow, the the, the bowstring for the for the for the, the bow and arrow. So we want we want to load that up here and feel that connection. So the arms, the hands, feel those fingernails still. We're this is going to maintain the continuity throughout the whole system, the connection, the energetic connection throughout. Because now we're going to, as we sink into that right leg, now we're going to turn. And without bobbing up, without pushing away, we're going to just stay down, but we're going to start reaching, separating with the elbows. And the wrists, feel those fingernails. Pause and feel those poles in opposition. 
Feel the, feel the load in your right leg. You're sinking into that right quad, you're sinking that right leg. And then continue, reach, 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 opening, opening the shoulders, feeling that expansion. Open the chest, reach with the crown of the head. You're about 70% in your right leg now. And feel that, that expansion there. So by opening and lengthening like this, we're really stretching that rubber band. We're pulling back the bowstring. We're, we're creating a very powerful pathway for the energy to travel. And it also has the structural integrity that comes with really activating the connective tissue system. So this is the most yang part of the, the movement here. We're feeling with that, that yang expression with the right hand and the yin support of the left hand. And now we're going to dissolve that. And we're going to feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, and spiral down into the claw of the right, the right claw, the right leg, and bring the hands in. So left hand under the navel, we're loading up that right claw. Right hand, right palm faces left palm. Reaching with the elbows, opening the shoulders, opening the chest, feeling the fingernails, and then Sink into that right claw and step in with the left foot. So here we are, we're loading up, really getting confident in the power of our right leg, our ability to hold that position powerfully, securely, so that we can gracefully extend the left foot. So now we sink into that right quad so that permits us to step out with the left foot on a 45. Let me step back here. So I'm able to, if I'm here like this, I can step out. If I don't spiral down like that, if I'm here like this and I just rock over to the right side and I try to step out, my foot can't, I can't establish a position there because my leg's not long enough. I can't telescope it out there. So I have to go down to meet the floor. So I do that by uh, spiraling down. So then, oh, I can then, I can put my heel down now. If I'm up here, my heel is several inches above the floor. And so I can't, I can't really make that, that graceful step. So what I end up doing is I just kind of lunge into it and, I've lost my root, I've lost my energetic connection if I do that. So this is the transition here. This is important for every move in Tai Chi Chuan and it's particularly important for this one. We feel the ball, we set the knee, we spiral down, bring the foot in and then we're, we're loading up that quad so we can then step out gracefully. So do that step back, step out, step back and do it with a minimum amount of movement in your in your body. So once you have that, you establish your, your foot position. You feel the ball of your left foot now. And feel the ball, you push the left knee out and you set that. So we're just establishing the position yet uh, so far with the left leg now. And now we're going to uh, spiral down to the right. So we're loading up that left claw, softening, sung, we're releasing down, down, at the same time reaching up with the crown. So what are we doing? We're opening up this yin chi of the earth and the yang chi of the heavens coming through. And so now, oh, we need to have a structure which is strong enough to be able to, to handle this much chi. We have to have the, the structural integrity. So we do that by having our claw open, we're able to make that step, we're able to wind up, and now we reach with the elbows and fingernails, feel those fingernails, and then you open by turning 
the body, reaching with the elbows, reaching with the wrists. Feel those poles in opposition. The body turns very slowly and gradually to the left as you open. Open, open, open. Left hand is yang now, right hand is yin. The whole posture is very yang, it's very expansive and open, but the yin component of the, the sung kwa, the legs, everything sinking down, allows that to balance out the yang of the expression. Because without that, without that yin in the, in the structure, this would have no power. But now you can feel into your hands, you can feel into your, into your arms, you can feel that connection throughout. That reaching outward allows for this to have a structural integrity that uh, is uh, really surprising when you actually apply it. So now feel the ball of the left foot, you set the left knee, and then we're going back to yin. And spiraling down, spiraling down into the left claw and loading up again. Feel the difference in the energy now. We're compact, we're pulling in, we're contracting. And that's what yin does, it contracts so that we bring the foot in. Ah, and just feel that, feel your central equilibrium as you maintain your posture, the verticality over that left leg. Because now we're going to spiral down to the left and then reach out with the right foot. Step back, just feel that. So you want to be able to have that, be able to have that extension there. So let me uh, let me do it with my back to you, so you can follow along that way. So here we are. We're getting the ball of the left foot. You set the left knee. You spiral down to the left. Reach with the elbows. Reach with feel those fingernails. You're loading up. Notice how my butt is not outside. Of my my foot, it's loaded up here. I'm feeling the connection in the uh, in the ball of my foot, and then I step in with my my right foot, so that I can be very centered, relaxed in my left leg. So then now I can pick up my right foot and step out and establish a position with my foot without having to load it. I'm still stably in my left leg. Now I'm gonna feel the ball of the right foot, push my right knee out, set that. And then I'm gonna activate my right claw and release down, spiral down without moving my knee. My hands are still over my center line. Loading up that right claw. And now I turn, I reach with the, the elbows, feel those fingernails, and I reach with the wrists. Opening, feel the hands pulling apart, those poles in opposition. Reaching, body turning as you reach. Extend and open. Feel the arms opening, the chest opening, shoulders opening, everything expansive, young. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the right, and we're going to yin now. Step in with the left foot and establish your position in your right leg. Really get nice and secure there.
you pick up your left foot and step out on the on the 45 left ball push your left knee out and set that spiral down into your left claw so you're loading up and turning to the right you're spiraling down to the right notice how wide how open your groin is your everything gets is very expansive here this allows the, the energy of the earth to come up through the yin channels in your legs it activates the hui yin the uh, point between your genitals and your anus that is the it's the the foundation point for your torso for all the energy in your torso you're reaching with those elbows you're feeling you're going to start to turn and as you turn feel the elbows pulling apart and you don't have to go very far just just feel just feel that the energy that gets activated by that that pulling that reaching and turn, 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 turn. Open, open, open. Want your left palm up, your right palm down. Energetically, the, the yin hand is receiving from the earth, the yang hand from the heavens. But if you pay attention, you can feel into the palms of your hands and you can feel the loud gong points there, which uh, major energy gates. And you can feel the activity that's going on in the palms of your hands. Cool. So, so from there, then bring your hands down. And just pause and feel into the energy that gets generated by this by these actions we've been performing. So that's we're doing it nice and big there. Now we're going to do it small, just a couple of times here. So if you feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee spiral down to the to the right. You're loading up the left claw and then just pull, reach with your elbows, reach with your fingers, your, your wrists without going very far. Just feel the, the power that's even in that very small movement. Now feel the ball of your right foot, set the right knee spiral down to the left, rotate your palms and then open and feel those poles in opposition, nice and small. So this is how we get, refine our Kung Fu. We start big and get smaller, smaller, smaller to a point where it's barely noticeable. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, even smaller. And then turn. Almost no movement at all. Reach with the elbows. So everything's reaching without reaching. There's no physical extension or very little, yet we're we're using our our uh, mind intent, our E, to, to make that happen. And who's guiding that? It's you, the, your, your Shen. You as a spirit, you're guiding body and mind and creating these effects. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee spiral down to the left and turn and open.
rotate so both palms are facing each other. And here you're going to feel into potentiality without moving. So the potentiality is, is this, right? Boom, but we're not gonna move. We're just gonna feel into that potentiality in the, in the arm. So that it's there as a recreatable potential of energy. And just feel into it going either right or left, big or small, but without moving. And you bring your hands down. And feel into the yin of this posture. Feel the energy in your hands circulating throughout the whole body. Allow that energy to do what it needs to do. And step in. Take a deep breath. Gather the chi and then throw it all away. Dispose of it, disappear it, empty out. And trust that there is an infinite supply there just waiting for you to tap into it anytime you like. Please have a seat. Rick. Ah, uh, Keystone Cop Kung Fu. <laughs> I mean, just, just when I thought I had a handle on it, you literally turn on me. You <laughs> turn on me twice. Oh, no. <laughs> and my body has, my body reacts like, you know, two oceans smacking together. I was just getting it. The flow is going in. You turn on me. <laughs> I'd love to know how Sharon did with you constantly turning. Yeah, we're doing it this way. Now we're going to do it this way. Oh. With my back to you, my front to you. I mean, and, and by the way, yes, there's a limited amount. I mean, unlimited amount of chi, but, you know, disappear it. Oh, it's not going anywhere. It is so full up. It's sort of saying, yeah, good luck getting rid of me. Somebody, somebody else talk. I'm going to be down here. <laughs> thank you rick <laughs> i was laughing i was laughing like it was a buster keaton short about three quarters of the way through oh man uh, uh, richard i i was just going to thank you for uh, your patience with me this is the most I've been able to do in seven months. So. Fantastic. Bravo. Uh, on the mend. I love it. Anybody else? Scott. So uh, when you were explaining how to do the transition and the step that was very helpful as far as you were saying, well, you know, right now I can't get my heel down. And because uh, that's an area that I've had a little issue with, so that was that was helpful. Good. And the um, yeah, the spirit explain with all the explanations and the spirit stuff and everything was very was all very helpful. Great. Good class. Thank you.
Peter. You're on mute, Peter. You're on mute, Peter. You're on mute, Stan. Yeah, the most, the most challenging thing for me is, um, you know, with the weight on, on one foot, uh, on one leg, spiraling down, loading up to, uh, to maintain Sun Kwa. It's very hard because of my hip limitations, but still, um, it, you know, there was, it was another step of feeling more of, you know, the, the, the flow of chi with the, the whole thing. The, the arms are much easier for me, but to, you know, uh, doing the legs is harder. And then, uh, I mean, there's so much that was interesting, but the most interesting thing was, you know, right at the end, the last time we did the big movement and then we paused when we were expanded and you emphasized the upper hand was yang and the lower hand was yin. Uh, I had a moment of actually, I think, simultaneously feeling those two energies at the same time. I mean, feeling the yang up and the yin down with one like mind holding them both just briefly. And that was just fascinating experience. Beautiful, Beautiful. terrific. Sharon. Well, I'm not gonna get into the yin and yang feeling. Mm -hmm. Try, but what I did experience is I could feel it all internally. Um, it wasn't all out here, it was inside me. And I felt, at one point I felt like my heart was getting a stretch or a massage. Mm -hmm. Nice, yeah. nice, beautiful. Oh, anybody else? Okay, any questions on this? Oh, Valerie. This is just a comment. Um, and I know you've used this before, but uh, maybe a minute before you would use the term, you know, feel like there's a rubber band that you're stretching out. I had been thinking about that, trying to explain to somebody that, um, um, uh, the term is gone, um, poles in opposition. And I was thinking rubber band and, oh, that is, that's excellent. Yes, the rubber, and then you said rubber band. Uh, you know, it's perfect. That was perfect. Right, right. That's what I was feeling now. That's what I felt like. Richard. Um, this, I, this is, uh, this exercise is extremely helpful in understanding spiraling down and turning and what the two purposes are. So thank, so thank you for that. This is really terrific. Oh, great. Beautiful. Thank you. This is good. Jonathan. You know, that comment you made about the guy who said we should feel the whole body, the body as a whole, it does occur to me that when we spend so much time sitting, that's really hard to do. It's like sitting kind of interrupts the body flow. I mean, I always, you know, we always know, yeah, sitting is not healthy, but from this point of view, it's extra not healthy. And it's, and, and it's so that when we're in that, what you're trying to do to integrate us is, is really profound. I mean, it's, and yet simple, but it needs to be done so much, right? It's that whole connection because that energetic coherence and that three nails and what you get us into in the beginning does give us, it's like an anti-chair thing. Like if you've been sitting in a chair, get up, feel your wholeness because you've just been interrupted for the last two hours as you're watching TV or whatever you're doing, right? That's really a very profound thing. And and then when we do that qualm, we release where the leg meets the torso, there's so much tension. I, I think emotional stuff is in there. You know, that's a that's a really significant joining point. And so yeah. even working that a little bit. So again, it's just, a, once again, your your exercises seem to be meant to be done a hundred times a day uh, <laughs> as a restorative mode to things that interrupt essential parts of, of how essentialness of wholeness that we need to connect with. No, just throwing that out there. I'll call you stated. Thank you. It was uh, John Song Fong, right? John Song Fong. Yeah. I, 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 
I drew a blank on that. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was, uh, it's sometimes credited to John Safong and uh, uh, whether or not, I mean, a lot, it's a Chinese custom to kind of find somebody really important in the past and, uh, and assign the, the wisdom to that person. Uh, it, it's, it's a good one. Peter. Yeah, you know, I, I'm finding it just like mysteriously miraculous that the instruction to feel your fingernails works so well. You know, for like <laughs> 73 years, I never felt my fingernails once, you know, in, in that way. And you just say, feel your fingernails and suddenly, bam, you know, I can, you know, how, how, do, we know, how do we know how to do that? You know, how? Uh, and then, and, and it does, you know, um, you know, it does activate something that fits with the connect, you know, I do feel an energy like in the whole body a bit when I do that. So it's making, you know, because of, you know, our discussion last time uh, and, uh, you know, about how conscious feeling is such a central thing as an integrator, a unifier, um, how you know, I'm open to any more tips and tricks like that to develop conscious feeling. You know, right. fingernail is like, seems like that's, that's a really, it's almost a technique, you know, it's, but it seems to, if I'm right, that, that along with the, um, the activation of the connective tissue system, you're amplifying conscious feeling when you feel the fingernails. No. And, and uh, so, uh, you know, I'm a greedy person. I want more things like the fingernails to, uh, to you know, conscious feeling seems like at the heart of the matter. So. You got uh, it. It definitely is. Scott. Well, I was actually going to comment on this, but now that Peter said it, uh, when you said, you know, take the take that feeling in your fingers and your hands and then, you know, try and feel it feel that in, in the rest of your body. That's kind of the exercise, Peter. Okay, I'll work with that. Yeah. This, Richard. The, well, the fingernails is kind of the evolution of the way that we all felt, I'm sure, when we first started, point your finger. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, but this, this works better. This works way better than, you know, I've been pointing my finger every day a bit for a long time, you know, for over a year now. And like, I can feel my finger, but am I becoming more coherent? It's a little hard for me to say. Well, um, you're, but, you're, you're, shortened, you're shortened by about six years. Shortened? You've, you've gotten to the profound feeling about six years after the pointing of the finger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But yeah, but the point, the fingernails seems like a bigger club than, than pointing the finger. But maybe it's a different issue. It's you know because there, 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 there's similarities, but there is a there's more more to it. There's more to it than that. So it uh, yes, uh, but it it certainly is. It's a it's a nifty tool for awakening the whole gang. Get everybody everybody playing in the same uh, you know in key. Just, just keep once you're now that your mind is open, keep it open. More will come to you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny. Like so much of this stuff, like I've been talking about fingernails for ten years or so, you know, <laughs> and 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 it uh, maybe maybe longer, but yeah, it, it's an idea that until it's time, it 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 doesn't it doesn't resonate, and then suddenly it's like oh. You know, it's like, yes, that. Yeah, right. Yeah. It, it might be a little bit like learning to walk. In other words, you start by taking small steps. Eventually, you're able to use your body and go faster and faster and faster. So the idea of doing the finger for a year might be the absolute way to get it flowing. If you try oh. to do the fingernails six years ago or whatever, may not have yeah. worked as well. Yeah, yeah. interesting. You know, it reminds me, you know, the story of Thomas Aquinas, great intellectual. At some point, he had a big illumination. He said, all my thinking and writing are like straw compared to this. 
but maybe he would not have had the big illumination if he didn't do all of that thinking and writing. I, could, I couldn't have done my 75th book if I hadn't done my first. <laughs> right. Sharon, you had something. Yes, um, I commented before what was going on with myself during the exercise, but I want to just let you know that after sitting here for several minutes, I feel magnificent. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Join the club, Sharon. Join the club. I'll, I'll settle for magnificent. <laughs> You're certainly glowing. Uh, yeah, you are. <laughs> You're luminous. Uh, okay. Uh, great. Thank you all so much. It's been a lot of fun. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Maria. Love you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria.